Hey, I'm Charlie Chapman, and today I'm going to show you a really quick tutorial on how to create the sort of sketchy style custom app icons that you can see here that I make for each episode of my podcast launched, uh, as well as, you know, has actually showed up in, in a couple uh, apps themselves, and I'd love to uh, see you show up in the future. So take this as a, not an endorsement, but permission to uh, to use this in, in your app, this style, uh, if you'd like to, because... I think that'd be pretty sweet if there's a bunch of those out there in the world. Uh, so I'm going to do this in Procreate, um, but really you can do this in pretty much any drawing application that lets you draw with a pencil, Apple Pencil, or Wacom tablet. Or honestly, you could probably figure this out with a with a mouse or something. Um, it'd just be a little bit harder to get the look kind of down. Um, so I actually have like a template that I use. It's in Photoshop, but it's really straightforward. Um, I exported that out into two separate PNG files that uh, I'll have on my website that you can find a link to in the description, assuming this is on YouTube. I actually don't even know where this is gonna end up yet, but there'll be a link somewhere. Uh, otherwise you can go to my website, charliemchapman.com and uh, somewhere on there you'll be able to find this, I'm sure. Um, so the, the example I'm gonna do for this is actually making a uh, a version of the Swift Playgrounds app icon. So that's this guy right here. Pretty simple, straightforward, should be easy to show the sort of technique. So yeah, let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do actually is uh, just take a screenshot of that right there. And this is for real what I actually do for all these. Uh, I don't need a high resolution asset for anything because all we're gonna do is trace over this. So I'm not gonna try and get too exact um, on this because it's actually gonna make it a little bit harder if I do. Um, so I'm just gonna save that screenshot and hop back over to Procreate. All right, so I'm going to hit the import button up here um, and we're gonna create a new Procreate uh, project based on just this file. Now this is, th these are the two images that you'll find uh, on my website linked somewhere. Um, one of them is the background that all of the app icons will use. And then the other one is a mask that uh, will round off the corners. And you can use that whenever you're kind of previewing to see what it's going to look like in real life or whatever. Um, but for now, we're just going to create a new project based on this background. All right. So you can see um, all this is, is a simple gradient. And then I took the, um, the sort of grid that I think Apple provides and I just traced over it, um, with a white brush to kind of give it a little bit thicker and sort of rougher looking look that kind of fits everything else. Um, and then set the opacity kind of low on that. Um, but again, you can just grab this image from my website and just use this yourself. And so now I'm going to click this gear, I should use this, click this gear icon up here and then hit add and then insert photo. And I'm not going to show you this part, but I'm going to select that screenshot that we took earlier. That pulls in that screenshot. And before we resize this, I'm going to click this up here and set the opacity down pretty low. The main thing is we want to be able to see sort of the silhouette of everything. Um, and for the resizing part, we need to see the silhouette of the actual app icon itself. So I'm just going to put it about right there. And now we can resize this. So it's exactly the shape of our box here. And that's about good. It doesn't need to be crazy accurate because kind of the whole point of this style is that it's rough, which is super convenient for a thing that you need to do uh, weekly or bi-weekly uh, for a podcast. That was not an accident. Uh, <laughs> so now we have this, we have the outline of the shape that we sort of want uh, very easy to see. So now I'm just going to go to the, the little layers. I should use this, the little layers thing up here and create a new layer. And this one I'm going to call uh, outlines. And I'm using the Studio Pen Brush and I have the Streamline, this thing. I have it turned all the way down. Um, what that does, if it's all the way up, you can kind of see, it's sort of like readjusting the, uh, 
the pen to make it smoother as I go, but I don't really want that for this. So if I turn that all the way down, it's going to be a lot like rougher of a look, um, which for what I want is for this style is what I, what I want. So I, I just have that, that with the streamline turned all the way down and now all, Oh, and the, the size, I want it to be relatively big because especially if for my artwork, um, I actually have a decent size resolution because people are looking at it on their podcast screens. Um, but if it's going to be used as an actual app icon, this needs to be kind of chunky, um, because it needs to show up at, you know, a really small size on a, on a screen. So I'm just going to start, um, outlining this silhouette here. And I'm going to intentionally keep it uh, rough. A lot of really small lines is kind of the goal. And I don't, I don't need to go like crazy, but I kind of like, you know, these little, little things that stick out like that, um, that adds to the, you know, texture of it all, especially when, um, especially when it gets shrunk down, you're going to want some of those that are like you know, kind of obviously visible. And I keep smacking the microphone with my pencil here. And just to show how rough these usually are, I usually do this while I'm doing the final edit of an episode. Um, it's kind of relaxing. And sometimes I just do them for things that I have no intention of releasing because I would never get, you know, the rights. That's another thing. Uh, if you're ever making icons based on somebody else's art, especially if it's going to look similar at the end result, make sure you get permission. Um, I'm giving you permission to use the launched sort of style, but, uh, but you know, honestly, even if, if your app icon is a, uh, paper airplane that looks exactly like mine, you probably even should, you know, ask me, I guess. So, okay. So that's pretty much pretty much all we need for that. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the, uh, the, uh, image that we brought in because we don't really need that anymore. And so now I just need to fill it. So I'm going to add a new one and call this fill. And then the important thing here, uh, is that you want all your lines kind of going in the same direction. Otherwise it looks kind of sloppy uh, I mean kind of weird to say considering this whole thing is sloppy but it, it, I think I think anyway it looks better if they're all sort of consistent so I'm just gonna start about right there oh whoops so actually I want to turn down the size now I have numbers that I am used to with my Photoshop files uh, like I said I don't normally use procreate so you know you'll want to fiddle around to see what what looks the best for you but I usually make it quite a bit thinner because I'm going to put the lines really close together and, and I will fast forward through most of this because this is boring. So one thing to note here is, um, it's, it's kind of awkward to try and go all the way across. That's going to look sort of weird. So it's okay to do big lines and then join them, but I try to not do it. As, I try to limit that as much as I can because you are going to get, uh, you are going to get pretty noticeable like lines where they overlap the two sort of seams, which having a couple of those is cool, but you don't want them to be too even. Like I wouldn't want to, to make, you know, you can see this line right here, um, where they overlap but I wouldn't want to do necessarily the same thing right there. Cause then it kind of looks too obvious. So I try to like fill it, you know, a little less evenly over here. So now there's this, this sort of obvious one here, but there's not necessarily one there. If that makes any sense, this is probably getting way too in the weeds for something that is going to end up on a tiny app icon anyway, but that's what I do. Okay. So that's pretty much what that looks like. Um, you notice it looks really weird with the aliasing whenever I shrink it down. If you resize it, um, when you 
export it or you resize it like even in preview on the Mac, it usually looks quite a bit better, but you might end up wanting to play around with the thickness of those lines or how um, how many you put on there just so it maybe doesn't look quite as weird um, when you shrink it down. But in these previews, it's going to look even weirder whenever you shrink it down like that. Um, so we have a lot of the, a lot of this junk sort of on the edge. I don't mind some of it, but I don't want that much. So I'm literally just going to switch over to the eraser and clean up, um, a bunch of that. All right. So this is, uh, pretty close to kind of the actual end result. And it really could be the end result depending on what you want to do. Um, so I'll show you really quick the other piece to the template. So if I go to import, whoops, if I go and add another photo or file, um, this launched icon template mask, I'm just going to add that on there and you can already see if I zoom out. So there's now, um, this, uh, corner is cut off. And so it's easier to see, I guess, if I do this. So I really just use that, uh, depending on the icon, you know, if there's stuff that overlaps on the bottom, like for example, um, the slopes icon here that I did earlier for Curtis, uh, if I turn on the mask there, you can see down here, it's kind of cutting off the, uh, the fill on that mountain. And the reason that's on a separate layer and that you don't do that the whole time is that the actual final thing you export, you want to have all that extra stuff because the, the OS is going to be the one that actually crops it. Um, so you, you know, if you have this turned on, it might not line up perfectly or if Apple ever changes their algorithm for masking again, uh, you know, they might not line up and it would look weird. So anyway, that's all that, that's all that part of that template is for. So anyway, um, so you can have that on to see what that looks like. And then the other thing I always do with my podcast and might not make sense for an app icon, but I still think it's kind of fun to do is adding all this extra, uh, stuff. So I like to add like, you know, extra lines on everything and bullet points. Cause the whole point is this kind of is supposed to look like a sketch. Like you were sketching out what you're going to do. Um, and it's also an opportunity to hide, you know, Easter eggs or fun little jokes or something like that. So the way I do that is literally just create another layer. I'm going to move that up to the top here. Um, create another layer for all my junk and maybe make this a tiny bit bigger. And then I just go to every single corner and sort of act like that's extended out a little bit and same there. And then do that to this corner. And this one down here. And I'm making them a little chunkier than I would normally, but that's because, you know, the idea is that this would be used as an app icon. And so anything you do, you need to make kind of fatter so that it's actually visible whenever you, you know, shrink it. Um, so I have these and then I'll start going through and adding just like dumb little th measurements or things that make it look like notes. So maybe I like put a little arc right here with a little thing and zoom way in and write, you know, this is a measurement and you probably can't read that at all, but that doesn't matter. The point is it looks like writing. Um, and then, you know, do something like there and then now this is also an opportunity to put little jokes or something. If you wanted to do that, um, a lot of times I put these little sort of like I find, you know, one of these lines and one of these lines and I'll put like a little measurement thing, like as if that mattered for some reason. And then, you know, write something 
and actually I would probably normally make this quite a bit smaller so that you could actually sort of write in here. Um, maybe, you know, a little, swoop it really doesn't matter because nobody's going to be able to read it and then arrows are always good this is a wing and and then the last thing is uh i like to put you know something with bullet points or ideas so like uh icon ideas and then, you know, cause this is like acting like if we are coming up with this app icon ourselves, so you might say like, you know, bird or train cause it's swift, like fast, uh, bullet, you know, something like that. And maybe cross some out, circle the one that was selected. And so, you know, you can just keep kind of adding stuff like that. And like, you can see in, uh, like the spin stack one, there's some specific, uh, drawings in here too. Like he's from Springfield. So I have Springfield Springfield's uh, flag that they should add, but isn't technically their official one. Springfield, Missouri. That is, uh, this is like an old app icon that he, or an old app that he did actually the icon for this app originally back in the day. And these were, these were things that were sort of brought up or I knew about his app beforehand. So it's like, a way to sort of sprinkle in some extra uh, little Easter eggs or whatever. But the main thing is just that it looks cool. Uh, the Seth Worley one has all sorts of, you know, references to his other podcasts or other products or something like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Oh, the other thing, too, is I talked about uh, always, always going in the same direction whenever you're... Uh, whenever you're doing the fill, but something like flighty, um, if I have, yeah, I do. So if I bring this opacity all the way up and bring him to the top, whoops, his opacity all the way up and bring him up to the top. Um, you can see, you know, this is like a really simple icon, but there's actually in reality, like a decent amount of shading, um, you know, where the wing, uh, sort of like ambient occlusion, where the wing like runs into the uh, fuselage, I guess that's what that's called. Um, so there's more detail in here than just the outline. And so, you know, you don't want to get too crazy with your detail uh, if you're trying to sketch it out. But one thing that I do sometimes do is like change the direction of the lines as a way to kind of create that detail illusion thing. So, you know, the wing kind of goes one direction, the... Uh, turbines go in one direction and the actual fuselage goes in another direction. So, you know, you got to kind of get creative if you're trying to convey changes in shading or color when all you really have is a single color and a single stroke really to work with. So anyway, uh, that's pretty much it, I think. Um, so yeah, have at it. Uh, again, link in the whatever for uh where you can get uh these files and definitely share with me if you uh if you make an icon or use this technique for something else um yeah because it doesn't have to be related to you know launched at all this is this sort of hand-drawn technique can be used with color um different colors to to do all sorts of things so anyway uh thanks for watching and i uh, hope you guys have a good one